This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Well, hey there and happy Tuesday. Welcome to episode 57 of She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts, and thanks so much for being here today. My guest today is Anisha Collins, and I'm really excited about this interview. We're talking all about how to have a debt-free business. We haven't talked about this topic yet on the podcast in, you know, almost 60 episodes, and so I really enjoyed my talk with Anisha. Her tips were really realistic and attainable, and I appreciate her take on running a debt-free business and you know not having to have all of the bells and whistles to get started you know it really helps you have that freedom and flexibility in your business when you can start and run without you know kind of the the leg hold that debt really is um i'm certainly not an expert on money i know that anisha uh know so much more than I do. So I was really pleased to have her on. Let me tell you just a little bit about her before we get started. She's originally from Staten Island. She was born and raised. She moved to Florida in 2006. She's been shooting weddings since 2008. And she also has a background in nursing. Um, She is kind of a nerd by her own admission. She maintained her 4.0 GPA while also earning the perfect attendance award out of her entire nursing class. Isn't that amazing? I just love that. She no longer practices nursing but believes that some of the teachings she learned there have been carried over to her photography and cinematography businesses, uh, specifically how to be organized because it has really carried her a long way. And now today, as a photographer and a cinematographer, her motivation for being a breath of fresh air in in a market that's sometimes oversaturated uh, with more attention placed on the photographer or the cinematographer themselves and less focus on the clients. And so she loves to provide her clients with quality and a great experience and every wedding or project that she shoots is unique and it just brings her absolute joy to make her clients feel special and to give them an end product that is superior quality. So without further ado, let's go to the show with Anisha Collins where we're talking all about running a debt-free business today. Anisha Collins, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, As I was kind of telling Anisha offline, you guys, we have not touched on the topic of starting a debt-free business or running a debt-free business at all. And I'm really looking forward to it because I think it's something that we all, I mean, as business owners, we think about, we think about where our money goes. So super excited to chat with Anisha about this. And uh, I did give you um, her professional bio there at the top of the show, but Anisha, I would love for you in your own words to just briefly tell us who you are and what you do in the wedding industry. Yes, so my name is Anisha Collins, and I am a wedding photographer and cinematographer in Central Florida. I've been shooting for about eight years now, and um, I love it. (laughs) I love visual arts and just creating, having fun with it. Uh, And I bet there's a lot of really beautiful places to do that in Florida. Yeah, Florida kind of, you know, gives you a a great canvas uh, selection. You don't have to worry too much about the weather. I mean, even when it rains in the summer, everyone knows between 2 and 3 p.m. Don't schedule anything. And then after that, you're fine. (laughs) And then you're golden. Tell Mm -hmm. me me more about how you incorporated uh, cinematography into your photography business. That sounds interesting. Sure. Um, I started working as a personal assistant slash project manager. Um, I would say like midway um you know of the eight years of shooting and basically it was for music videos that were being shot in florida i've done a few in in georgia with the same company but basically that's how i got uh, my hands on cinematography Mm -hmm. and then actually a friend of mine um she saw some of my videos and she was like you know she really you know think about shooting weddings and i was just like oh no mm -mm, that's (laughs) photos of weddings different but I was like video that's too much and then um she referred me to a bride of hers they had been doing her company had been doing weddings for about two years or so uh, and they referred me and then my first wedding video was supposed to be the wedding she referred me to and then I ended up booking three weddings before that whoa Uh, yeah so I guess it was kind of like a a transition that I didn't see coming but I was prepped for it you know with the Mm -hmm. PA work etc you know how did how did those other three clients hear about you honestly I would definitely say um, from social media and my website I started out 
with Facebook actually as my website. And I used to push Facebook like night and day because I, you know, I didn't have a website until yeah. I met a, um, a music artist who wanted me to do a photo shoot for his company. He was doing like an all uh, female album and he wanted to have a female photographer, videographer, etc. And he said, would well, you have a website? And I was like, no, but I have Facebook. And I started linking him to, to all the albums on Facebook. And, you know, he loved my work, but it was in that moment when I was like, no, I need, I'm professional. I need a website. So I invested in, um, that's pretty much how other, you know, other people found me just through Google and <laughs> having a website. That's incredible. I love that you just used what you had at the beginning. You're like, I have a Facebook page, so I'm going to use this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so smart. Well, you used to be in the nursing industry, Anisha, and yeah. I am very interested in the journey from being in that industry to now running a photography and cinematography business. <laughs> um, I got into nursing, honestly, because I wasn't really sure what it, what I wanted to do um, coming out of college. And my mother is actually a registered nurse. And she's like, well, why don't you try nursing? I was like, well, I've always liked helping people, but I never saw myself as like going to school specifically for that. Um, so I went to school, graduated. I actually earned the perfect attendance award, which is <laughs> like, I love yeah. that. <laughs> nursing school, if you ask anyone who was a nurse or is a nurse or whatever, it, it's very, it's tedious. So I don't know how I made it every day, but I did. <laughs> um, and basically I just, started volunteering with a local church organization um, in Orlando, Florida that, that did a lot of concerts. And um, they had me on like the merch side of things. And I was just like, I don't see myself selling stuff. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, I didn't know it was going to help me later on. But <laughs> um, so one day I just brought a camera with me and um, I just started taking pictures. And it was this fire that came inside of me and I just, you know, I asked the, the um, leader of the organization if I could take images of, you know, their events and he was like, sure. Um, so from there, I was still working as a nurse, but I would go to these, you know, concerts and shoot, you know, the concerts. And then eventually over time, like, honestly, I don't want to sound extra spiritual or anything, but like God revealed uh, my passion to me um, yeah. that may not make sense to some, but, and um, I basically prayed about it, slept on it. And he was like, just do it. Like, that's how I was spoken to. And I woke up one morning, got my first, you know, semi pro camera and I just kept shooting and practicing. And I stayed, you know, working as a nurse until I was able to transition, you know, smoothly. And what was that time frame from when you started, you know, when you got your semi-pro camera and you were ready to do the thing, what was the time frame between uh, doing both jobs, so being a nurse and doing the photography business until you transitioned full-time into your uh, photography business? <laughs> I would say probably like five years. <laughs> Just five it, years. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, it felt like 20. <laughs> and it, was, <laughs> it was definitely hard because, you know, there's things you think about, like, how am I going to, you know, sustain financially? That's right. Then I had my family who was like, how are you going to give up nursing for taking photos? You know, and in their eyes, that's how they see it. They don't see it as a passion or a profession or even a real business, um, you know, that, that can be successful. So, yeah. <laughs> that can be, that's, I, I've, I've, uh, heard that that can be one of the most difficult challenges to overcome is to how do you explain it to people who are close to you when they really especially if you have a you know what some would consider a great career as a nurse you know from the outside it just looks like wow you're a nurse that's incredible and it is um Mm -hmm. so they wouldn't understand you know to them it is just taking pictures but you have a successful business and so how did you kind of navigate the waters and you don't have to share personal details but how did you just navigate the waters of making that decision to jump to full time um, with your family and friends, you know, the people who really care about you? <laughs> the family part was hard mm-hmm. uh, because it was mostly my parents, you know, any, any parent is concerned about their child's yeah. welfare and making sure, you know, like I said, they can take care of themselves, etc. So it was hard. It was very, very hard actually for me to get over their opinion versus friends uh, more so. But I got to a point where I was like, I like helping people, but I I really stopped liking nursing um, just because the medical field uh, has changed so much. And I started seeing things that I didn't like. And I was just 
the more I, I was shooting, you know, uh, taking uh, images, I was falling more in love with that. And in nursing, I was miserable. Like that's the best, <laughs> that's the best yeah. way that I can explain it. I was, I was at work, but I was miserable. And it was just like, it's not what I want to do. And, you know, some people say that's not the, the wisest like uh, indication that it's time to go. But for me, it was. Um, and I, I felt immediate relief when I was like, I'm done with nursing. I, I do still keep my license active, you know, because you never know, you know, I, I not necessarily that, I'm, that I would give up on my business, but you know, you have um, airbags in your car for a reason, right? You know, so they're there if needed. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how I look at it as like a little airbag should, you know, should I need to. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Right. Well, and I, I love that you, I think, you know, for you, of course, you said it felt like 20 years, but I really appreciate that it, you know, you kind of slowly transitioned over a period of five years to full-time photography. I think a lot of times in the, in the wedding industry, you're just kind of like, the, especially online business and things of that nature, there's a huge push to be a full-time, you know what I mean? Like go yes. full-time, go full-time, go full-time. And it's just, it seriously does not happen in 90 days. Like that, those kind of stories are very few and far between. And truly you have no idea what they were doing before that. So um, yeah, just, I commend you for that. Thank you for sharing that part of your story. I think it's really important for us to be realistic and honest about that yeah I, I also if I can add uh, another yes. note um my, one of my friends actually uh recommended the book um Quitter by I think it's John Acuff John Acuff and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you and um funny thing is I follow Amy um Demos who is a well-known photographer and in, she had a, a blog about you know transitioning or going full-time you know within that topic and she recommended the book as well. Um, and I think a lot of, I think a lot of um, new photographers or you know those who are starting out, they they really don't see the behind the scenes of, of those who have been out. You know, uh, even even non photographers that I follow, like like Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V or, or um, Patrick McDavid, they're at a they're at a point right now where they're well known, but you know they've spent years building their following, you know what I'm saying? So like correlating it to what we do, I think a lot of people get discouraged because like you said, they want that 30 day or, yeah. or 90 day transition. And sometimes it's not realistic. You know, I tell a lot of people who, who ask me, why do you go full time? The first thing I tell them is, you know, get rid of as much debt as, as possible and say like, those are the two things that I did. And like I said, it was torture, but still working as a nurse while I was, you know, paying off, you know, debt, you know, whatever I, I needed to pay off and made it go faster because there was an additional income to get rid of what I didn't, you know, you know, the debt that I didn't want. <laughs> or yes. Need. Oh, yeah, this is so good. Okay, well, let's get into it then. I, I'm loving this already. So when you, it sounds like when you were, especially since when you decided, okay, I'm going to transition into photography full time eventually, it really sounds like running your business as a debt free, you know, as a debt free business was a conscious decision. Is that right? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> okay. So tell me how, um, kind of tell me, the, uh, you know, practically and tactically speaking, what were you doing to, um, you know, rid yourself of debt before you moved full time into, into business? Well, you know, one was, you know, what I just previously stated, which was, um, you know, having that second job allowed me to, you know, send the nursing money. That's how I'm going to separate it so people don't get confused. But I'll send the nursing money off to, you know, what I was paying uh, you know, paying off. And then I would keep the photography money, you know, to the side. Um, also, my father, he's very much um, strong about having a cushion. Um, mm -hmm. Since I've known my dad, it was like, if you get $100, put 50 away, you know, mm -hmm. invest the 25 and spend the other, you know, the other 25, you know. Uh, so um, he was very much in, into that. So I think, you know, in my bloodline, it comes from there and just watching him. I've, I've never seen my dad without, and I don't mean that in a bragging, you know, sense, but whenever things, you know, went wrong in, in the home, as far as, you know, things needed to be fixed or someone got sick or things of that nature, he was there and he was able to help his family financially because he had that discipline to, to save. Um, in the, in the photography aspect of things, what I still do to this day. And I actually learned, um, I would say uh, probably a little bit 
not midpoint in my business, but more towards the, the latter end. I connected with um, Stephanie Hendrick of Land and Hendrick Photography. They're also in Orlando. And um, we would just talk about different things of, of the business. And one thing that she said that like was like Eureka <laughs> was to when whenever you receive any income from the business was to put yourself in a higher tax bracket mm. and and deduct that amount from you know what you're receiving. So whatever tax bracket you're in, go one up and deduct that amount, you know, from from every single booking that you get. And trust me, it's not easy because you're really in in a nutshell throughout the year, you're, quote unquote, taking money away from yourself that you can technically use. However, at the end of the year, there's two benefits to that. And that's one, if you owe, you know, if you owe any taxes or whatever, then you have that cushion going back to my father. Mm -hmm. Um that you can pull from instead of saying, oh my gosh, I owe X amount of dollars. Where am I going to go in to get it from? Um, or if you don't owe, you know, whatever your circumstance may be, then guess what? You have a cushion to either invest back into your business or, you know, to save depends, you know, or if you feel like, hey, I didn't go on vacation and, you know, you're doing things, you know, legally the right way, then you have something to play with. <laughs> so that's, that's um, another way that um, I was able to, save and keep myself out of debt and then any piece of equipment that I wanted I worked for so if, when I first started it was like if I wanted that you know the can 85 millimeter lens I looked up how much that you know product cost and then I would book something for that amount so that way I was buying the equipment and it was you know it was mine no one can take it away from me it's not on a credit card you know what I'm saying um yeah. so that's how I I pretty much did things of that nature as far as you know, all of my equipment is my own. When I got my first Mac computer, I waited months. And that was probably the hardest purchase to hold off on because everyone was like, get a Mac, get a Mac. And I'm like, okay. And I'm, I'm using Adele and she's crashing and I'm reloading and she's, and I'm like, oh my goodness. And I finally went to the Mac store and the first thing is like, oh, open a credit card. And I was like, nope. <laughs> and I, no, thank I, you. <laughs> nope. And um, I, you know, looked up the price and what I wanted to get as far as the type of computer and all and memory and all the other, uh, you know, um, specifications. And then once again, bought the computer, you know, for the price that it was and it was mine. So that's a practice that is hard. I'm not going to tell anyone that it's easy, um, but that is a practice that I just carried with me and I still do to this day. That is so smart. And your father is just, I mean, going back to what he said about always having the cushion, I imagine that by taking his advice and putting it into practice in your own business, that that really gives you, uh, it brings like a sense of peace. Is that, would you feel, do you feel like that's accurate? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm. Now, how did you, I think, um, you know, if, if someone is just getting started in their photography business, or maybe they're in the same situation where they have Adele that is crashing, and that means a computer, not the singer. Um, <laughs> how, how were, um, excuse me, do you think that your work product was at all affected by just kind of practicing delayed gratification? Um, how did you reconcile that and just say, nope, this is good enough. I'm still doing well. That's, Wow, that's a really good, good question. Um, absolutely. It was between patience and, um, you know, just because I had a standard, you mm -hmm. know, I think it's I think it's like a, a, any female that that's single and, and wants to, you know, find a mate. They create standards that they want to find the person out. Are they going to meet those standards 100 percent? Honestly, it depends on you. If you're that picky and you can wait to that 100 percent. You know, then go for it. Some people will meet, you know, ninety percent, and you're, you know, you're content. Um, for me, it's just I, I would just between reading stories and hearing stories of people, you know, taking out loans and still paying loans, you know, their third year, you know, paying back loans in their third year of business. I just didn't want to do that. I didn't want that type of weight on me. Um, it, it even might be a moral thing. Like I don't like owing people money. Um, when I was, you know, younger and like, you know, in my younger years, like if I asked my mom for like $20, I would pay her back almost as quick as I got it from her, which almost made me think like I should have just waited and saved on my own. So those little, you know, triggers I had early on, I just, I just never liked having debt, you know, and I know there are certain things that you cannot pay, you know, in full unless you really, you know, have it like, 
sure. cars and, you know, some people, you know, buying a house, those things I understand. Um, but a lot of the things that we buy in life are not necessities. Their mm-hmm. their desires or their wants. Um, and cre- even credit card debt. Most of the most of the debt that we collect, if it's not for like emergency purposes or th- you know things that are really really a necessity or importance, their wants. You know, so controlling your wants and needs is, is pretty much like the, the, I guess the ratio or a strategy that you know that you can use um, in this scenario. Mm-hmm. What would you say that are there any just specific maybe instances where you're able to purchase things or, um, you know, things, events you were able to do or whatever? I'm, I'm just throwing out examples. But what are some advantages or maybe opportunities that you've had um, that you've been able to do because your your business isn't carrying an amount of debt? I would say, honestly, investing back. Oh, you know, okay, like I, like I was saying, you know, when you have that cushion at the end, of, and it, it has happened. Um, when you have that cushion at the end of the year, um, you know, investing back into the business. Uh, like I ended up buying another iMac because at the you know my MacBook Pro was you know aged, and I needed a faster processor, and be, so I had that money on the back end, you know, to buy it towards the end of the year. And then I was able to turn around projects faster, which generated more bookings because it was like, okay, I'm done. So now I can take on, you know, more, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. there, that's, that's the benefit um, that I see. I think that it also allows you to really assess what you're investing your, your time into, you know, if you're booking things that are of value, you know, or things that you want to shoot, then ultimately, you know that you're investing back into your business. If you're doing these little jobs to pay off debt, you know, this photo shoot here, this this booking here that you don't want to do, but in the back of your mind, it's like, I have to pay off, you know, X amount of dollars. You can actually pull away from your passion and make yourself hate what you do because you're just trying to pay off debt. Wow, great point. Absolutely. It can start to feel like drudgery, kind of. Mm-hmm. Mm. If someone is kind of listening right now, and I, I just want to point out that Anisha, like these tips are just so practical, straight from her life. She is not like a financial, you know, guru. I would say, you know what I mean. But she is just doing the thing and making these conscious decisions, and that is what I love about your story. You are, you're just, you're just a regular person like the rest of us, but you're doing extraordinary things that allow you to. Um, to do things in your business that maybe um, someone listening isn't able to do right now, which kind of brings me to my next question. Um, If someone is working towards a debt-free business, what are just two very practical pieces of advice that you would give them that they could, you know, start implementing after this interview? Um, I would say make a list of what you have as far as your, you know, debts to pay off. And what I say, you can do it, in the reverse or the way I'm about to say it. I would pay off what's smaller first and then apply that amount to what's bigger. You know, so for instance, let's just say you had $50, you know, on one on one card and then $100 on another and a 1000 on the third. So you pay off the 50 and then you apply that 50 to, you know, the 100 so it goes away faster and then you apply the the um, so if you're at 50 and a hundred, so 150 to the thousand and you'll pay it off faster as opposed to how most people pay off debts. It's like, let me pay the minimum for the next 10 years. Um, so that's a way that you can pay off your debts quicker is to start off with the smaller ones, pay those off. And then that same amount of money you apply, you know, at, you go to the, the ones that are left and you apply that same amount to the larger ones until you're, you're finished. And the reason why I recommend that is you were already paying, you know, the $50, you know, using my example. Mm-hmm. So it's not a loss for you to keep doing it because you were already doing it. You're just paying off. It just is helping you pay off the, the larger amount faster. And then once you're done, you know, those things are, you know, they're out of your hair. You, you won't see them again, you know. 
Absolutely. And Dave Ramsey calls that the debt snowball. And so I will link up his book in the show notes and kind of his um, debt free method because it's really similar. It's, it's it's not similar. It's the exact same thing. So uh, <laughs> it's, pay, it's called yeah, he calls it the debt snowball. And it's pay off the smaller ones faster. And then once everything is paid off, you still apply that monthly amount to the next one, the next one, the next one, just like Anisha is talking about. Um, so if you're if it sounds confusing, um, I'll link that up because that's kind of a resource that you can use that explains it as well. So that's such good advice, Anisha. I love that. Thanks for explaining that to us. Sure, sure. What do you have? Excuse me, not what do you have, but um, uh, aside from your computer and stuff, like what, um, once someone has a debt-free business, what are something, or maybe what are you looking to in the future that you want to invest uh, in your business to, um, you know, grow your business? I would like a, a larger office space. Uh, you know, for, you know, um, in-person consultations, mm. et cetera. I have been looking around and I, I do have a space that's attractive to me right now. Uh, but to be honest, most of my clients are like, can we Google uh, or can we Skype or FaceTime? And I don't mind um, because, you know, it saves gas. And if people feel Look, here's how I see it. If you feel comfortable in your home to FaceTime me and you book anyway, what difference does it make than us speaking in person? You know what I mean? Like if that's, if talking in your pajamas is, you know, you're comfortable talking to me, I don't know if you took a shower or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm, not, right. I'm not going to judge. Um, and to be honest, I've had quite a few clients that, you know, I'm in Orlando and they may be in Tampa, you know, and depending on what part of Tampa, that could be, you know, a two hour drive. And, not that they don't value what I do or value me, but um, they may not want to drive two hours for a 30 minute consultation, you know, if they don't have something else to do within that day. Um, so like last year I booked a, a client that was in Tampa, the wedding was in St. Pete and we Skyped. That's how we did our consultation. They booked both services, actually. They booked photography and cinematography, and it was great. You know, they, they were able to ask any questions. Um, and also, it allows them to look at, you know, what I have online while we're talking. I mean, I do that in person as well, but it's there. It's in the comfort of their home. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of times I, you know, I, I tell clients that, you know, that's fine. So, yeah, I would say a, a bigger office space uh, would probably be what I'm looking towards. I thought about having like a studio for local, you know, photographers and cinematographers to shoot at, but there's a really, really awesome studio out here called Studio One. I shoot there all the time. So I don't think I want to take on, <laughs> he's doing a really good job. So I don't think I want to take on that responsibility. Um, but if I had to, to pick something else, that would probably be the, the second idea for expansion. Oh, smart. I love that. Yeah. Don't, don't, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I Thank really, you. yeah, I really appreciated what you said about, you know, you would like a consultation space, but um, you're really weighing that against, is it, is it really going to lead to more bookings? Because yeah. see, people are still comfortable with Skype, FaceTime, Google Hangout. And so um, I love that you're kind of weighing your options there. And so just because you have these things, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to lead to more bookings. Again, yes. if it's not broken, don't <laughs> fix it or don't add to your stress. If you have a simple system, it doesn't matter. As long as it's working for you, then uh, it's still significant. Right. Agreed. Smart. Agreed. Totally. Well, uh, as we wrap up here, I would love, I have a couple more questions for you. And the first is, um, I am interested, do you have any uh, tool recommendations for people who are um, maybe managing debt or better to better manage their money or even just tools you use in your business? Sure. Um, I am old school. I'm still a, a paper girl. <laughs> um, and I know a lot of people use uh, different softwares like QuickBooks, you know, things like that. I, I've heard of 17 has, but I'm not sure if they have like a financial side. I know they have the, the booking side, but I'm not sure about the financial. But basically um, what I do is I do a lot of bookkeeping. I track funds every day. You know, when you go to uh, you know, a store, a supermarket, you, you know, the manager who's putting in the, 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 I can't think of the word, the cash drawer, you know, mm -hmm. um, trust me, they check their numbers and, and all that before they, they do that. So I, you know, I have that same 
a method of practice. So that's one tool that I that I do is I keep track of my, you know, my business account. So I have, you know, a checking and a savings. And I also keep track of my personal account, um, being that I don't have any employees for myself tax wise that, you know, my income will kind of all goes together, but that doesn't mean that I should still be irresponsible, you know, for my personal numbers and my business numbers. So keeping track of that is, is really essential. So if you're going to use spread, a spreadsheet or, or QuickBooks, uh, that would be one tool financially that I would um, highly recommend. The other is to set a goal list. Um, for instance, like part of my 2017 goals, I'll, I'll share one was, um, <laughs> to open up another savings plan. This is uh, my dad speaking through me again. <laughs> and um, a lot of times we set these like astronomical numbers that make it harder for us to uh, achieve. So, you know, it may seem like a small amount, but I, I wanted to try and save at least 4,000 uh, for the year. And I know that somebody might be like, 4,000, that's nothing. It may be nothing to some, but it's still... It still goes back to that cushion statement. So, you know, you can do that $10 a day, you know, or however you want to break it down. Um, so I would say having a goal of, of what you want to save and write it down and, and, and um, have it within your vision so you can see it every day. When I was in high school, I was in JROTC and one of my instructors, he would say, you know, for, for the new year, put your goals in a, in a frame. And keep them by your bed or, or somewhere where you can see them. So for me, my business goals stay on, on you know, I have like a wall next to my computer. And um, that's another tool that I use to remind me of, of my goals. Um, and budgeting, like knowing how much stuff costs. And I think a lot of people, this is probably the, the best of all three that I'm giving. A lot of people really don't um, invest time to really sit down and lay out how much everything costs sorry there's phoenix <laughs> okay. um, so um there is a oh can you give me one second because i would love to share um one place where i actually she gives a breakdown of how to like do your pricing oh yeah which, yes of course which also deals with um you know your goals and your finances and the website, hold on one second. Sure. I have a binder that I keep like my personal, um, it's still business related, but it's a binder that I keep like my webinars and courses um, in so I can stay organized. <laughs> Ooh, yes, love. Um, okay, so this is Jasmine Stars. Here it is. That's it. Okay, so um, it is called. Mo Modern Market Dash Business dot com. Mm -hmm. That's one. She has a really, really good um, pricing strategy. And then she also has um, another blog post that was on how to make more and work less of price comparison chart. Um, so I found this, I don't even remember. I just know I was on Google one day and I don't even know why I was looking it up, just randomly searching. Um, and she popped up and it was like a gift from heaven. <laughs> um, the breakdown the breakdown that she uses, the strategy that, that she uses is so simple. Like even if you hate math, cause I know some people hate math and when you're budgeting, that's where, you know, you need to do your math, right? Um, right. The way she breaks it down, it's so simple. And it's almost like, okay, this is what I have to charge in order for me to stay, you know, within my budget or within my means where I can run my business and have a life. You don't want to just run a business and all your money is just, you know, you don't have any play or you don't, you're not really, you know, um, you don't have money for your retirement plan right. and stuff like that. Um, so I would look into those, um, this, the two pieces that I gave you um, on pricing and that will help a lot of people as well, because I know part of, part of staying out of debt also has a lot to do with, you know, what income you're bringing in. So if you're not bringing in enough income, you can't pay off your debt. 
So that's a really, really, really good tool. Excellent. I will put all of that in the show notes, guys, so that you can grab that. Um, and so you can just go to shecreatesbusinesspodcast.com and uh, head to Anisha's interview. So this uh, this will be in the show notes because that sounds like an incredible tool. I will definitely be checking that out. Yeah, it's really awesome. I actually did it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is <laughs> this is stuff because sometimes you, you find these and it's like, that's not realistic. I have to make a million dollars to be successful. Like, you know, and the way she broke it down, I was like, oh, this is this is I can do this. Yeah. It's doable. Yeah, it sounds really doable. And honestly, when you when you are running a debt free business, and you have so it's like it is freedom and flexibility. Yeah. Um, no, and you don't have to like Anisha just said you don't have to be making a million dollars to have freedom. You can do mm-hmm. that very easily by just making a few changes. So um, anyway, just appreciate that so much, Anisha. What is on the horizon for you and for Unashamed Imaging in 2017? just growing and learning more. And that, that really is a big goal for me. I have, um, you know, I have daily enrichments that I do. And I think taking care of yourself is very important, especially as an entrepreneur and, and then, you know, in the photography slash cinematography business, um, take, you know, taking care of myself was something that I I sort of neglected in 2016. 2016 was a very, very, very busy year, Mm -hmm. but I didn't give Anisha the same attention that I gave my clients. I love my clients. Don't get me wrong. But you know, it's just, it's what I, what I remind myself of is when you go on a plane and they say, you know, if you are, if the altitude gets too low to put the oxygen on yourself first and why is because you can't help anybody else if you can't breathe. So for me, I noticed last year that I didn't do a lot of play time. I didn't take personal time. Um, So I have managed myself this year to still, you know, give myself to my clients, but in a, in a, in a better way that I'm still giving myself to myself. That makes sense. Yes. Um, I definitely want to book more luxury style weddings. I am there, but I'm not there as much as I want to be. And I think, as a business owner, like being real with yourself at where you're at um, is, a, is, is, a, is a great thing to do because sometimes we think we're somewhere that we're totally not. Um, so that's another, you know, one of my goals. And um, honestly, even being on this podcast was a part of a goal because I wanted to challenge myself to do things that I haven't done, you know, yet. on on a different level you know you could do when you're starting out you do local stuff you know that don't have that many um followers or that much reach and i and i i don't regret those that's all preparation and training but as you grow your goal should grow your goal should scare you to an extent you know um so that's pretty much what i have as far as um you know just networking more growing more personally and, and reaching some of these uh Fear goals is what I call them. I'm not afraid, but they're fear on the fear list. <laughs> Yes. Oh, very well said. And I love to, I'm, I'm loving that the podcast could be a little goal checked off your list. That, uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, tell everyone where they can find you online. Um, you can reach me on my website, which is unashamedimaging.com. I'm also on Instagram, the same handle is unashamed imaging. And Vimeo, it's Unashamed Imaging. So across the board, it's the same uh, name for everything to search for. Ah, excellent. And I will put those links in the show notes, you guys. Anisha Collins, thank you so much for being on the show. It was a real pleasure to speak with you. And thanks for providing such practical information about running a debt-free business. Thank you for having me. And this was really a lot of fun, seriously. Thank (laughs) Thank you. you. Oh, you're (laughs) so welcome. We'll chat soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.